Good afternoon, and welcome to St. Joan of Arc. Our entrance song is number 462, I Heard the Voice of Jesus, 462. <laughs> Please stand. <laughs> of Jesus say, come on to me and rest. Lay down the weary one, lay down the head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was so weary, worn and sad. I found in him a rest. My soul revived, and now I live in Him. I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. Look unto me, thy morn shall rise, and all thy day be bright. I look to Jesus, and I found in Him my star. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in, in the, the highest, highest, and on earth be Almighty ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rendering, rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred, 
according to the flesh. They are Israelites. Theirs, the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, the promises. Theirs, the patriarchs. And from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind had was, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter, and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, summer is coming to a close. I know some children are already back in school, some are due back in this week and some next week. And I was thinking about something that happens during the summer, something that, uh, that parents know all about. And I only know because I am an uncle to several nieces and nephews. Um, a child comes running into a room crying or screaming 
because they've experienced pain, maybe a bee sting or a bruise from a fall. The adults come running to give comfort and they realize that it is only a sting or just a bruise. They also realize that it is not something to fear. There's no need to panic. Instead, they kiss the wound, maybe they apply some ointment. Uh, they assure the child that everything is going to be all right. But for the child, it isn't like that. For the child, it's, ca it's catastrophe. The child sees only danger and panics. The adults, in their wisdom and experience, know that this is not the end of the world. They know The child, however, can remain inconsolable until the pain subs finally subsides. Fear of the unknown often leads us to cry out to God. Farmers who fear drought will pray for rain. People who have children in trouble will make novenas to bring their children around. One of the remaining great unknowns, cancer, can lead people to bargain with God for more time. Faced with these, with difficulties that seem to be unsolvable, we cry out with the disciples about the ghosts we fear. We cry for help, uh, help from God, who so often seems to be silent. And we're afraid because we don't know how things will turn out. It is I, do not be afraid, is one of the most frequent statements in the Bible. Throughout the Old Testament, the Jewish people cried out to God and at every turn, at every turn for rescue. That cry is echoed in Peter's cry today in the gospel. At every turn, God repeats, it is I, do not be afraid. Why do you doubt? Well, we doubt because we don't know what will happen next. What will become of our family in a crisis? How will we cope with pain and suffering of illness? How will the person get through his addiction, their addiction to drugs? How will the mortgage be paid? In each of these, the winds that blow fear into us, all these fears, we are left not knowing what will happen and our imaginations can lead us to fear the worst. We can only find God, though, in the quiet calm of a peaceful spirit. For Elijah today, God's presence was definitely not in fires or storms. And even though the ladies in the last row thought there was a bizarre coincidence between the song saying the voice of God and a sudden, sudden burst of thunder. That's not God speaking. It was not in dramatic bursts of power. It was a gentle breeze, quiet, serene. That's what displayed his presence. Elijah was bombarded with noise of his anxiety and only a quiet calm could bring him God's presence. Memory and experience can help us to calm our fears. Memory, our own or that of the community that is presented in sacred scripture, mounts the evidence of past turmoil in trial that goes on in our mind. We need testimony, witnessing that God has been faithful in the past. The lives of the faints are filled with accounts of their suffering and fears. Even if they were to suffer a martyr's death, their faith in God showed them that he would never abandon them. I was thinking about a friend of mine in Charlotte who used to keep a prayer journal. You know, people would ask him to pray for them or something like that, and he would write it down in his journal, and he would write down, you know, the date. Then he would write down what he prayed, and he would wait, and he'd continue his prayers. When the answer came, he'd go back in the book and write down the answer. In that way, when we're really doubting, when he was really in trouble, he could open that book, 
And he could say, look at all the things that God has done. Look at how he, he has responded to all of these prayers of mine. Gives you comfort, lets you know that God is there. And God answers prayers. And God does not forget about us. He's not indifferent to us. He loves us. He cares for us. I was thinking there are other things that we do to sort of employ this, this sort of technique. Many of you, I imagine, are aware of the Relay for Life, the American Cancer Society. And it's an opportunity not just to remember fondly those we have lost to cancer, but it also is for us to spend time with the survivors. An illness that severe need not be isolating. It may be an opportunity to come together in support, to share experience, to say, yes, I've been through that. I know what that's like. I know what you should expect. These are great comforts. And this kind of goodness is inspired by God. Shared experience then can be for us a gathering of helpful memories. Now we realize as adults we no longer fear bee stings, or if we do, we know what to do when we get one. Back in my cycling days, which goes back quite a way, I, had, uh, I used to cycle with a guy who uh, was allergic to bee stings. He always carried his bee sting kit with him. So he was prepared, he was ready if something might happen. You know, we no longer scream out when we fall. We've fallen before. We know not to be worried, we know what to do. That kind of experience is invaluable. Each setback, every challenge, gives us more knowledge. And if we're really wise, we learn not just from our successes, but from our failures. Failure, doubt, the unknown, teach us about the resources we have at hand, about the God who reaches out to us. Maybe the Lord is, is as frustrated with us as he is with his disciples. After all this time we've been together, you are still doubting. Does God say that to us? I say us, not just you. I'm including myself. In all the new storms that come our way, for the church, for our family, we need to return to that calm and quiet voice of the Lord in our memory, our experience, in order to find the Lord's presence, to take a deep breath when we need to, to pause from just panicking and overreacting and allowing the Lord to speak and to show us the way. In the midst of our lives, which can be attacked by doubts and anxieties about the future, we turn to this Eucharist and to the commitment the Lord has made with us. I am with you always. This promise of God's abiding presence with his church, with his people, is the anchor to which we should always return when we find ourselves being knocked over by waves of fear and doubt. May we hear Christ's voice, which calls to us from beyond death and resurrection, do not be afraid, it is I. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We ask God's kindness bringing our concerns with confidence. For church leaders ordained and lay, for a spirit of reconciliation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this nation and every nation for progress toward peace through justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the working poor, the elderly, and the homeless, for a living wage, good medical care, and a safe environment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have lost a loved one, for children who have lost parents, for husbands and wives who have lost their spouses, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all here present at the Lord's table and for all who cannot be here because of age or illness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We offer the Mass today for Dorothy and Herbert Rodney, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we continue our prayers for Ukraine that peace may be established there and that the country may be returned to its condition before the invasion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Uh, please add your own intentions in silence. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for those on the Hawaiian island of Maui that as uh, they continue to deal with this crisis with the wildfires, that they may receive the assistance that they need and for those who have lost loved ones that they might know consolation. We pray to the Lord. God of wind and sea, you calm our fears and bring us peace. Hear the prayers your spirit inspires to us to offer and grant what we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. For your convenience, baskets are available in the narthex for regular offertory and second collections. Our offertory song is number 440 on Eagle's Wings, 440. Oh, 
his hand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Joan of Arc and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
communion song is number 415 in Christ alone 415 Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Our Lord. Amen. Uh, following all Masses, the St. Joan of Arc Library will be open. A Catholic daughter will be there to answer any of your questions. The, king, the knights will be collecting school supplies in the narthex. This weekend and August 19th and 20th, box in the narthex for your convenience. Stop 
by for the Knights of Columbus pancake breakfast tomorrow following the 10 a.m. and noon masses. Two masses will be held on Tuesday, August 15th, Feast of the Assumption, the Holy Day of Obligation. Uh, noon in English and 7 p.m. is bilingual English and Spanish. Registration for the 2023-24 faith formation classes will be held on Saturday, August 19th. I'm getting a nod from Tim. I'll get the right dates here. And Saturday, September 2nd from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and again on Wednesday, August 30th from 6 until 9. Read this week's book or excuse me, contact Tim Kelly and uh, or Ava Tabora. There are numbers in the bulletin. Both of them are here tonight. You can corner them here. For the students in Peter Cruz's confirmation class who are being confirmed in October, your final eight classes will begin on Wednesday, August 16th at 6 p.m. Again, please read this week's uh, bulletin uh, and contact Tim Kelly, Peter Cruz, or Ava Tabor if you have questions. Uh, also in, in uh, this weekend's bulletin is information pertaining to background checks, sexual misconduct, and protecting God's children classes for all volunteers. Now we require this for all volunteers, but if you're uh, not a volunteer here, I recommend that you take the class. The reason being it can help us to understand better how this form of abuse happens and what we can do to prevent it. So the more eyes and ears that we have out there listening, the better chance we have of stopping something before it happens. Oh, one more announcement. No one in the choir is permitted to leave until I speak with them after Mass. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our recessional song is number 446, How Can I Keep From Singing, 446. And we're singing verses 1 and 3. Above earth's lamentation, I hear the real, though far off hymn that hails a new creation. No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to the rock I'm clinging. Since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? What the I hear the truth and limit without.